Hello guys, Winston here. If you couldn't guess from my protracted intro or my last video, I was at Maker Faire New York just a little while ago. It was a lot of fun, and it was also good to see the Maker Pavilion increasing in size from last year. Unsurprisingly, 3D printing once again took center stage. Every other booth seemed to have adorned their booths with ABS and PLA printers and a smattering of sample parts that usually included at least one helical vase. Fuse Deposition Modeling even got some love from big name companies, with Dremel releasing their own $1,000 machine. But to be completely honest, not that I've ever really held back, plastic printing has never really impressed me. FDM, even with PLA, has some well-established physical limitations. Layered plastic is far less isotropic than even wood. Its strength changes rapidly depending on which direction you're applying force. Outside of prototyping or making desk tchotchkes, I really have no personal use for plastic printers. Resin printing, on the other hand, is much more interesting. Because layers are thousandths of an inch thick and often bonded at the molecular level, stereolithography yields parts that are smoother and more detailed with mechanical properties that can be tailored for specific applications. Formlabs is the resin printing leader in the consumer market with machines that sell in the mid four digit price range. Their new machine, the OnePlus, not to be confused with the phone, is capable of some pretty awesome things. In the spirit of Maker Faire, however, I think this project beats out Form Labs. It's a homemade stereolithography setup by a guy named Will Ware. Using a projector, some threaded rods, and a Home Depot bucket, he created a working 3D printer. I seriously applaud his ambition and creativity. But now, I think it's time to move on to the more exciting stuff at Maker Faire, subtractive manufacturing. And that includes more than just CNC milling, although I'll get to that later. As some of you know, Project Shape Oko was planning on showing up at Maker Faire, but had to withdraw at the last minute. Although we didn't have our own booth, Project Shape Oko was still present in spirit. There were several groups who were utilizing the Shape Oko platform at the fair, and here are three that I saw. Dome Candy is a US-based group that builds portable audio devices. Their latest creation is a small Bluetooth speaker for smart devices prototyped almost entirely on a Shape Oko. Genspace, a community biolab, brought out their OpenTron liquid handling robot, which utilizes a Shape Oko gantry and carriage assembly attached to a custom frame. In addition to sporting a fourth stepper motor for liquid dispensing purposes, the machine also features homing switches for precise payload delivery between resets. Laser Inc. is developing a laser etching module specifically for Shape Oko. At only 2 watts, the laser diode won't be strong enough to cut through plywood, and since the laser used is in the visible spectrum, it's incompatible with transparent materials. Nonetheless, I'm still excited to see what Laser Inc. can do since you can raster engrave images in wood and cut thin materials like paper or cardboard. Their product includes both hardware and modified firmware for the Arduino and G-Shield, which allows the laser to continuously vary power throughout a job. It should retail for around $500, assuming it makes it through the Kickstarter phase in October. Other cool machines I saw included the Mini Cut 2D, a CNC hot wire cutter, this Mini 3D printer upgradable to a CNC milling machine that I'm probably mispronouncing as the Boxy, the Creation Station, a fairly large desktop CNC which looks very capable with its large stepper motors and Acme thread power transmission, and the Fab Totem, a jack-of-all-trades CNC machine that comes with a dual-function extrusion and spindle head unit and support for laser scanning and four-axis machining. Its ambitious goal is to allow you to print, scan, and mill all in one unit. There were plenty of cool projects I saw, and plenty more I didn't see, but I think I've talked enough for one video. One does not simply summarize all of Maker Fair. I have another video in the pipeline and several other projects in progress. But for now, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all... sometime in the future. P.S. The documentary Print the Legend is now on Netflix, and it's really good. You should go watch it, even though it's about 3D printing.